नमो भगवते श्रीरमणाय हरिओं येट अनदर सेशन ऑन द सीरीज ऑफ रमणास आत्म विचार टुडे वॉट इज आत्म विचार विचार इज टू इंक्वायर सो आत्म विचार इज टू इंक्वायर अबाउट आत्मा द क्वेश्चन अराइज वॉट इज आत्मा इन संस्कृत द वर्ड आत्मा refers to your own self so it refers to if you are talking in first person it refers to me so basically atma vichara is an inquiry into who i am that's why bhagwan ramana maharshi has repeatedly instructed us to ask this question that who am i so let's try to understand how to conduct this inquiry as to who am i so as a first step normally how do we conduct inquiry into anything meaning you want to know about something you ask questions the whole purpose of asking questions is like you know you ask why what how when with these prefixes you ask questions and the purpose of all these questions is to find out more and more information about any object and then when you have adequate information about any object then you claim i know about it so you go on gathering information and when you have adequate information you say i know about that object and if you have lots of information then you become a specialist also in whatever the field interestingly this is what we are used to in the name of conducting inquiry and as a result of inquiry getting to know something meaning information about something more information more you know so in other words information is held in the form of thoughts so more thoughts you can generate about something more thoughts you can think of about something you say mo i know about that object however the scriptures say atma or the self is infinite and the self or atma being infinite is free from any boundaries or qualities is beyond all qualities so the question arises how do you think of something which has no boundaries which has no qualities etc how do you think about something 
And also the question arises, if you can't think of something, then no thoughts, no information. So the, how do you relate to this process of inquiry with regard to inquiring into the self? So definitely self being infinite and beyond all qualities, you cannot think of self. So how do you conduct the inquiry into the self? Interestingly, we are not going to generate thoughts, we are not going to collect information about the self. That is not the purpose or intention of self-inquiry because it is impossible to do it if you analyze it logically. So what do we do in the name of self-inquiry? Basically, what do we know about us? Of course, we have quite a lot of thoughts, quite a lot of information about us, saying this, I am that, I am so and so. So based on my personality, the personality is a sum total of physical, emotional and intellectual characteristics. So when you say I am a person, you can say I'm tall or I'm short, I'm fat or I'm thin. This is about physical characteristics. Similarly, when it comes to the mind, emotional characteristics are there. I'm what sensitive, you can say, or I tend to get angry, etc. So it describes my emotions. And then at the intellectual level, you have the intellectual characteristics saying that I'm smart, I'm intelligent, etc. Basically all my educational qualifications will come into the intellectual characteristics and these characteristics put together and anything you bring and link to these things, all the external things of the world put together, this is what you call a person and this is what we have grown up thinking we are. This person is what we are. This is what we have been brought up to think that I am this person. I am so and so. But interestingly, as I indicated earlier, self is infinite and which is free of qualities. Now, whatever, whatever we have as information about me, the self, is of qualities, of about the finites. And also, interestingly, whatever I know or I think I know about myself is constantly in a flux. It's changing all the time. The scriptures say the self is not only infinite, it is changeless as well. So if this person whom I think I am is changing and it is made up of finite definitions and It's on constantly in a flux and it is always indicating some qualities or the other attributes etc. That goes against what scriptures indicate as who I am. So then the question arises, how do we know what the scriptures say is right? 
Then answer to that question is again application of the logic will tell us that though all of these things change <coughs> what I regard, regard as my personality it keeps changing the personality which was there 30 years ago or 40 years ago or when I was an infant is no more I am not the same person 40 years ago is the same, not the same person as I am now. So that personality itself has changed. So if the personality itself has changed, how do you know that it has changed? How do you know that this personality is changing, that the personality has changed? To know the changes, if you logically analyze it, the know of the changes can't be part of that change. So in order to know the changes, in order to witness the changes, the knower or the one who recognizes these changes have to be changeless. Maybe this is logic. And if the knower of the changes is changeless. Now that tallies with what scriptures say. The scriptures also say the self is changeless. So then according to scriptures I am changeless and if I apply my logic, yes there is some changeless aspect in me, at least I can accept that. Otherwise I wouldn't have known these changes in this personality. So. Something which was there, which is there, which will be there continuously without changing as a substratum on which these changes are taking place. So that I can witness these changes and say my personality has changed. So when I logically analyze it, analyze like that, then it tallies with what scriptures say that the self is changeless and because that changeless self is me, I can say that these things have changed, the person, the personality has changed. So here now we are going to discriminate between what I am and what I am not. So this personality which I have been thinking that it is me cannot be me because it's changing. And I'm the one who knows these changes so they have, therefore I have to be changeless. So the personality is changing, so that personality cannot be me. Similarly, even to know the boundaries, the one who knows the boundaries, one who knows the boundaries have to be beyond boundaries. So the know of the boundaries have to be beyond boundaries. Know of the finite has to be beyond the finites. So if you apply logic like this, then at least logically you will conclude and accept the fact that what scriptures say about me is right. I am changeless, I am infinite and I am beyond all qualities, attributes, boundaries, etc. So here we are going on imagining about ourselves, I am this, I am that, I am that, I am a person, etc. And this is what the scriptures say. And here I am on an inquiry, self-inquiry. So here, in the name of self-inquiry, I dig out, I dig out everything and anything which I imagine about myself, thinking that I know myself, because what I know about myself is about this person only. 
So there are many thoughts. I mean, there are lots of information which I have, which I have labeled it and kept this is me. So in the name of self-inquiry, what we do is dig out all the information, all the thoughts we have about ourselves. And just merely digging them out is not the purpose of this self-inquiry. Then you compare that, you, or you test it. You try to verify it and validate it with what scriptures say and with what I logically concluded. I logically concluded that I have to be changeless. I logically concluded that I am beyond all boundaries. I logically concluded that I am beyond all the finite. And scriptures also say that. So now, whatever I dig out as this is me, this is me, all of that information, I am going to validate it and verify it and test it out. Does it stand? So, if I take this body, Logic says I have to be changeless. Scriptures say I have to be changeless. Now, is my body changeless or changing? Answer is changing. So then, what I think that this body is me is wrong. So the purpose of self-inquiry here is identify this wrong notion I have that this, is, this body is me to identify that, that is wrong. So once you know that this notion is wrong, the notion I have about me is wrong, as a, in the, in, uh, through this means of self-inquiry, then what do you do? When you know that what you think is wrong, then what do you do? You just drop it. You don't continue to hold on to it. You don't continue to act on it. Once you know, that what you thought is right, once you know that that is wrong, then after that what you do? You drop it. You don't continue to use it. You don't continue to apply it. So similarly, <clears throat> as I said, we have so many thoughts, we have so many notions saying that this is me, this is me, this is me. So the purpose of self-inquiry is to dig out all of these notions I have and then test it against what the scriptures say, what the logic says and what the Mahatmas say. So you test it against that and then if it doesn't stand the test, then you reject it. Till you run out of notions, information you have to dig out. So, till you run out of all these notions, till you run out of all this information you have, whom you, what you think is you. You go on doing this. And when you run out of it, then you have no more definitions about you, no more notions about you, no more thoughts about you. So the purpose of self-inquiry is to bring you to that point where you go on asking question and whatever answer you get by asking this question, then you test that answer or you validate and verify that answer with what the logic says, what the scriptures say, what Mahatmas say. If it doesn't stand the test, then you reject it. So you go on doing that till you run out of these notions. When you are free, from all these wrong notions, 
all these wrong thoughts about you, the information which you think you are, when you, when, and when you run out of all of these, then you are no longer imagining or thinking who you are. When you are no longer imagining about you, when you are no longer thinking about you, that is in other words, when you are free of all thoughts, you experience yourself, you experience yourself without any finite boundaries. You experience yourself without any finite boundaries. Meaning, you experience yourself just the way as the scriptures indicate who you are. The scriptures say you are infinite. Scriptures say you are changeless. So when you free yourself from all thoughts about you, that's the point where you are ready to experience who you are without any finite boundaries, without resorting to any qualities etc. You are just experiencing you as you are. So the whole purpose of self-inquiry as opposed to any inquiry about anything else is to bring you to this point where you run out of thoughts you run out of information about you because it is directly opposite to inquiring about anything else because inquiring about anything else the whole purpose is to collect information to collect more thoughts about something but here the inquiry into the self is to exhaust the information you have, which you think that is what you are. So the whole purpose of self-inquiry is to flush these things out, bring it to the surface, test it and reject it. Test it, reject it. And through that, you are flushing out all the information you have about you. You are rejecting all the definitions you have about you. You are exhausting all the information which you think this is what you are. You are just testing it and rejecting it. And when you have rejected everything and when you have nothing more to reject, You are left with only yourself. No thoughts about you, no definitions, no information, no qualities, nothing. In the absence of everything and anything, you are left with only yourself, no thoughts, no definitions. And at that point, you experience who you are directly. You experience who you are directly. I repeated it to emphasize on the word directly, where that experience does not require 
the senses, the mind or intellect as intermediary. Where the direct experience which does not involve the senses, mind or intellect. Because any experience which involves the sense or the mind or intellect is finite. But here the experience of the self which is infinite therefore cannot involve the senses, mind or intellect. So here when you are not resorting to the senses, mind or intellect because you are rejecting all of those thoughts having rejected all of that, you experience who you are directly. So the whole purpose of self-inquiry is to bring you to this point. So I want to again highlight the distinction between the inquiry into any other objects versus inquiry into the self. Inquiry into any other objects is collecting more information and equipping yourself with more thoughts. But inquiry into the self is, the, is diametrically opposite to that, where you are not collecting more information, not equipping yourself with more thoughts, but you are digging out the information which you think you are you are bringing it to the surface and you are flushing them out so that you have no more definitions, no more thoughts about you, enabling you to experience who you are directly. So that experience is free from any activities. Of course, you did the inquiry, the whole purpose of inquiry is to dig out and flush out the definitions. But once you have done that, when you are free of all thoughts, then you are free of all activities, you are not even thinking. So that experience, what they say, is effortless. In order to gain that experience, you do not have to put that effort. All the effort you put is to reject. The effort you put in the name of self-inquiry is to identify the wrong notions and flush them out. Once you have done that, then the experience of the self is effortless. And remaining in that experience, where you are no longer imagining who you are. Remaining in that experience where you are not trying to imagine who you are. You are not trying to define, aha, this is what, this is what it is. You are not trying to create any thoughts. Continuing to remain Continue to remaining in that experience is what you call abiding in the self or abidance. Meaning, you have gained this experience of who you are, which is of infinite nature and that experience did not come from anywhere outside. It is not caused by anything outside. And therefore, that experience is not dependent on anything outside. That experience is not dependent on anything external. That experience is not dependent on anything, period. That experience is from you and you are there. So you are not depending on anything else to cause that experience. So you are there without, you are there with yourself means you are not trying to create any thoughts etc. And continuing to remain in that state is what you call abidance 
in the self. Now, this abidance in the self is supposed to be effortless. So you may ask me, then what, is, what did I do in the name of self-inquiry? Okay. That if, yes, you did put effort, but that effort is not to gain that experience, but to remove what I have, which is preventing me from gaining this experience. So this effortless experience is what you call abidance in the self. And this is what Bhagavan Ramana Maharshi and even Yoga Swami has stated in Tamil as Summa Iru. Summa Iru means just being without putting any effort. So, this is what they have indicated with this famous Summa Iru, which you can consider it as a Mahavakya, leading to the knowledge of the Self, where you abide in the Self, which is supposed to be effortless. Maybe, we, may be, we can reflect on this Summa iru. What they meant again on another opportunity in the future. Om Namo Bhagavate Sri Ramanaya.